What is going on guys? It is Trifecta J here and I have episode 6 of my Angels franchise and today will be the Angels off season for the first season. And look at some of the retirements. Courtney Hawkins, once a top prospect, has retired due to injury. A couple of other big players, AJ Brzezinski, Ichiro Suzuki, Rafael Montero actually retires due to an injury as well. And the Hall of Fame inductees, David Ortiz, Ichiro, and Ramon Santiago. So we will move forward looking at some of our re-signings. I didn't offer anyone a huge contract. CJ Wilson is re-signing a lot of starting pitchers and a lot of our players will be brought back. And hopefully we will look to trade some of them next year for some prospect. Kyle Kendrick, the guy who didn't play much this year, will be brought back. And one of our coaching people that we were offering did not accept. So we look at the overall big board for free agency. Not a lot of very good players in my opinion. A, a couple of very good players. But they were older guys or guys I didn't really want to go after. But one of the players I definitely did is Kevin, I guess it's Maiton. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But we would offer him $4 million as an international prospect. He is considered a once-in-a-generation type prospect by some people. And we would give him $4 million to sign with the Angels along with Greg Hall. And we give him $2 million. Maxwell Zimmerman, a closer, we would offer a contract to and Brad Ziegler as well. A couple of bullpen guys just to sort of strengthen that area and get some good depth. Ryan Webb, a guy who didn't want a ton of money. Similar situation to Brad Ziegler. We would end up giving him $650,000 for one year. Greg Hahn does accept our offer along with Ryan Webb. Danny Reynolds is no longer interested along with an outfield prospect, Luis Baptista. Does accept our guy. A guy who had a good bit of power and would be a nice guy to sort of strengthen our farm system. Roldis Chapman does go to the Mets. So from the Yankees to the Mets. A couple of new players. Art Cornell, a guy who I was targeting in the draft, ends up unsigned. So we would offer him a contract. Eric Perrette, I guess is how you would say that. Has some nice speed and could develop into a good bench piece or leadoff guy depending on how well he does develop. Miles Ogden, a very talented international player we would sign. He's another A potential and then Sebastian Castaneda, I guess is what that would be. He is not very high overall, but has very good hitting ratings and would accept that. And a couple of guys were claimed that we released to be able to sign some of these new guys. Mark Melanson signs. Luke signs also. Kevin Mayton does end up accepting our offer of $4 million. So that was very good to see. He is definitely a little bit a ways away, but he'll enter as only 17 years old. So even being that far away, he won't necessarily be up, but he'll still be young by the time he really gets that high level. And now we get to the Rule 5 draft. Looking at some of the guys, Corey Nebel, I think is how you would say that as well. Not sure about some of these names. Gorky's Hernandez is another guy. Just looking at some of the people, Bruce Rondon was definitely a guy who was targeting a lot of good velocity and break, but does not do a very good job of controlling his pitchers. But the guy we would end up taking is Corey Nebel, and that would be the end of the Rule 5 draft. Moving forward, the arbitration hearings, as these go, sort of 50-50 on who they end up siding with. None were outrageous contracts, in my opinion. Shane Robinson does get brought back for not a lot of money. Matt Shoemaker, a guy who will probably look to move at the trade deadline this year. He is getting up there in age and could bring a nice prospect or two back. And then Cole Calhoun will also be brought back as well. So Daniel Nava, also Craig Gentry, a guy that will definitely look to move. He could be a nice leadoff guy for a little bit of the season, though. Now, looking at some of the different trades we can make, Will Myers was a guy who could play first base, left field, or right field for us. And we would, looking at some of these offers, none were really anything that I was looking to give up. They wanted Kevin Mayton or some very talented players. Of course, that's what you would expect. But at the same time, now, Lewis Brinson almost had enough to get him. He is with the Rangers, so we would be trading in division, but he is a nice power-speed combination. However, we would end up making one trade. It's Craig Gentry. For Jim Bell, a good guy with some nice speed, and Brady Aiken, former number one overall pick who would not sign and then was drafted by the Indians. He's a left-handed pitcher, and we'd also be giving up a pitcher and Corey Rasmus, so we would end up going out and signing one guy, and that would be Rajay Davis. My plan for him is to platoon and go against lefties along with Daniel Nava hitting righties. A look at the spring training. We have David Carpenter going down for two to three weeks. So he will be out maybe for the opening part of the season. Actually, he does recover before spring training is over. So he will be on the opening day roster as we end up going 13 and 16. Still towards the bottom in overall ranking. Did not hit very well and also did not pitch that great. 
Our hitting was actually very, very bad. Five home runs for Mike Trout, though, so he played well. And Todd Cunningham actually played pretty well as well. Now, pitching, we did not pitch very well. Uh, we have a couple of guys who pitched well. Mike Morton and Corey Nebel also pitched all right. Jared Weaver really struggled. And then the final trade we will be making, it's Cole Calhoun, Greg Holland, and Miles Ogden, the international prospect that we signed. And we will be getting Gregory Polanco. He's still 25-6-5 left-handed batter. He will be filling that right hole spot and ends up moving to a 90 overall as he is very good. And so he looks to be very talented and I'm very happy to get him. He fills another outfield spot and another future spot on our team. And look at our pitching rotation though as we're setting all of this up. And we'll end up looking at our batting lineup, and that will pretty much do it for this offseason. Not a ton of new players. We do get a couple of new prospects along with Gregory Polanco. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. The offseason, I thought, went pretty well. We had money to spend, but I didn't want to waste it on older players who weren't going to be a part of our future. And if you did enjoy, though, please leave a like down below. Leave your comments on the players we did get and the players that we traded away. Like I said, I hope you did enjoy. I will see you for the first game, which will be episode 7. I'm not sure which game that will be quite yet, but I will see you for it whenever it does happen. Cause I'm out.